Hi, Daniel Parsons with DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Today is a short message entitled New Start. This is an acronym for getting a healthy lifestyle. And if you want to find this post, it's the very first blog post that I wrote on my website. And I've got close to a thousand posts now. Uh, just go to danielparsonsministry.com. Just type in here, new start. You'll find that right there and medical missionary work. And you click on that and that's the page. See right there, danielparsonsministry.com forward slash one. Um, that's the way I did the permalinks in the WordPress uh, structure. So anyway, Let's have a quick word of prayer here. Father in heaven, Lord, I pray for this message to be able to bless other people. Maybe some people already apply some of these principles to their life, but they're missing out on a couple of them. And I just pray for the whole health message that you gave us. And I pray that this will bless many people. In Jesus' name, amen. So medical missionary work is the journey that I'm on. And I wrote this back in. Uh, 2016, medical missionary work involves using the skills God gives you to help people improve their health and well-being and quality of life. And I've got a new start video there. You can find that on YouTube. I have a pretty big channel on YouTube. When Jesus lived here on the earth, he healed the blind, the lepers, the sick, and the outcasts of society. He then taught them in parables so these very people he healed would have a clear understanding of who God is and about God's pure love. In medical missionary work, there are paid assignments and just the person that shares their knowledge for free, and that's my case. I let God take care of the finances, and he comes through all the time, quite wonderfully, I might add. The only reason I share this info is I ended up doing what I do now through a series of events that were out of my control, like I was ever in control in the first place. <laughs> that old ego. Hospitalized in 1994 due to some serious medical problems. At that time, I was in my 30s. I graduated from Washington State University in 2005 with a business an economics degree, and I invested in a small farm in 2005, and my career was outsourced that very same year, so what now? A neighbor asked me if I wanted to do a Bible study, and I was open to this request as I had started to read the Bible in one year plan in 2004, and that was just a inspiration that I received one day at the beginning of the year in 2004 and I said you know what am I going to do different am I going to set some new goals and inspiration came to me let's do uh, the bible you got these plans where you can go through read a little bit every day and contact me if you're interested in one of those plans I got a really cool one it's called the life journal bible reading plan Okay, and so my neighbors, they were all Seventh-day Adventist Christian, and I had never heard of that faith and that denomination until I actually moved to Washington State, and I started attending the church with them as one of my neighbors invited me, and I went, and the very first time I noticed something was really different than the Episcopal Church where our mother took us sometimes when we were growing up. I'm not knocking the Episcopal Church. I think there's wonderful people in all the different denominations and all kinds of different faith backgrounds. Um, but for me now, being in a Bible fundamental church is what I need. It's very good for me. So I noticed the Adventists, they spend an actual hour of the worship. Uh, um, many times the worship service is uh, at least an hour and a half maybe hour and 45 minutes, but they spent about an hour on the seventh day of the week. The Sabbath day is what it's known as in the Bible, a Saturday. If you look in the dictionary uh, and you uh, look at Saturday, it says seventh day of the week. And <clears throat> okay, so, um, and 
you look at Sunday in the dictionary and the uh, almanac and reference uh, books, uh, that is the first day of the week. And of course, Good Friday is when Jesus was crucified for all of our sins and he died for all of us, every single human being, even the vilest offender. Jesus died on that cross on Good Friday. And then he rested in the tomb on Sabbath. And in the Bible, it says Jesus rose on the first day of the week. And so that logically has to be Sunday. So when we uh, turn the pages for one hour in the Adventist church, and we are learning about God and how to apply the Bible to our own lives, this was all new to me. And so I was asked, uh, I wanted to become a member of the church. And I said, well, I agree to the 28 fundamental principles included allowing Jesus Christ into my heart to be my personal savior. And so in other words, was I going to let Jesus uh, be my savior and put him and his teachings above anything else, any politics, any um, anything else? Jesus had to be uh, numero uno, number one. I had 34 years of self will run riot experience. So I was ready for God to take over my life. I said, no problem. I surrender all. So I was baptized by immersion in September 2007. The Adventists eat very healthy meals at fellowship dinners after worship service, and they're always a treat. I was able to bless to go to one today. And today is the 9th of Ju July. 2022 it's a saturday and so i went to church this morning and we had dinner and then i did a hike this afternoon and uh i'll spend uh, some time with my wife and uh you know it's a good to rest one day every week because it's just a very very stressful world so uh, i had already made the move to improving my diet when I lost 70 pounds in two, year 2000 by removing animal products from my diet, it's a, I recommend a gradual change of doing this and not sudden because I know that some people have told me that they also gradually just got off of animal foods instead of doing a total elimination all at once. <laughs> and the way I did it was I got rid of the red meat first and then I slowly I got rid of the chicken, and uh, um, that's the best way I found it worked for me. So God somehow kept my mortgage paid on the small farm. I started off in the wellness industry, and for five years, I was able to harvest fresh organic fruits and vegetables to feed myself, and there was so much as far as yield goes that I canned 150 quarts of green beans, and I kept Yukon Gold Potatoes organic uh, most of the year to bring the fellowship dinner every Sabbath day. So I had a chronic health problem surface and it required more education, reading, research. So I decided to go full time into medical missionary work. I share the way that God has kept me around through a lifestyle that includes the New START principles. Notice the acronym New START. So here they are. It's just eight simple principles. Nutrition. My diet. Um, consists of mostly raw food, two smoothies a day, fruit in the morning and vegetables at dinner time. Now I'm going to need to go in here and edit this because I'm married now for three years. I've been blessed by God and my wife doesn't particularly care for that vegetable smoothie. So what she does is she prepares, prepares those vegetables raw and we eat them in a salad and it's wonderful. She makes homemade dressings out of uh, like things like cashews and almonds and sunflower seeds. And then sometimes uh, squeezes organic lemons and puts in a little bit of apple cider vinegar and some nutritional yeast flakes and a little bit of uh, herbs and mixes that together. And it makes such a wonderful salad dressing and it's all natural and no sugar added, no additives. So then we have a light supper and my wife makes really healthy, organic breads from scratch. Now, in my post before I, when I was a bachelor, I would have like an oat patty that I would make or black bean bur burgers that I make from scratch with green vegetables. So the other principle, exercise. My physical activity includes weight bearing exercises six days a week. And I, I kind of take it easy on, on 
Saturday because that's what uh, I believe is the Sabbath of the Bible. I did do a hike um, up in the foothills here where I am. If you lived in Texas where it's really flat, you might think I went up a small mountain. But for us here where mountains go up to 14,000, uh, 400 and some feet, Mount Rainier, uh, about an hour away from here to the north, you can see it. Um, yeah, I can actually see it from Longview, which is only about a 15 minute drive from here. Uh, but uh, so it, it's a small little, for it's a pretty big sized hill for us, but it's a small mountain if you're used to flat land. So, and uh, so, um, 30 minutes of exercise every day. And I do ice skating some in the winter. I do golf, I do a senior softball now. I really like being physically active. I do Pilates three days a week, pretty intensive uh, Pilates exercise. Just follow a couple of uh, women that are in this studio in New York City and they've got a really good routine that I enjoy. So the W in New Start is water. I make a gallon of distilled water each day for drinking and cooking. Add a half a teaspoon of pink Himalayan sea salt into the three liters that I drink. And I actually am doing something different now. I use an iTerra Care therapy device. Um, the classic blower is the one that I use to actually do a terahertz charge on the water. And it actually makes your water even more hydrating than this uh, water that I wrote about here. So continuing on sunshine, make it a priority of mine to get at least 30 minutes a day of walking outside in the sunshine because I live in the Northern hemisphere. Um, we're about 46 degrees North of the equator. So I'm actually closer to the North pole than I am the equator. Uh, in the months where the sun is high in the sky, I walk towards the South, which is giving me that sun exposure on my front side and then turn around and walk towards the north, which is getting my backside sun exposure. Now between October and April, I will go for an hour or more for walks as the sun angle is much lower in the sky to try and get some more vitamin D. Temperance, this is the principle of using good things moderately and avoiding bad things like alcohol, caffeine, drugs, gambling, and tobacco. I'm not gonna spend any time about avoiding those bad things. I, God's just completely eliminated all of that from my life. I've been off caffeine for a long time. I sleep like a baby I'm on no prescription medications. Thank God I'm in my 60s. Um, and so I do want to talk about using things moderately. I do still have a sweet tooth. And my wife uses uh, something called um, organic uh, coconut sugar. Um, and then there's another uh, one that's from South America that she uses, and it's just not coming to my mind right now. Um, but that's a, a much healthier sugar um, that's not like a white sugar that's been processed and stuff. And so she uses that moderately and some like homemade cookies and some homemade cake and homemade um she really likes to make these like blackberry uh, crumble cake and she made an apricot crumble cake. And a lot, a lot of these recipes are on our healthy living part of the um, blog here. So uh, there's over 240 something recipes there. So air, living in the Pacific Northwest is a blessing as for the most part, the air is very healthy. I do my best to avoid getting around old vehicles that pollute the air in my immediate area. This principle also includes learning how to do some deep breathing, which helps your body in many ways. So if you're stressed out for me, I really like to slow down and do a little bit of deep breathing. I sometimes forget to do that, but it's a good thing to be sharing this with you because I'll remember this too. Rest, I've had times where insomnia has been an issue. We have all had a night that we did not get enough rest. The next day is hard to function at your best. I use a few things to supplement what my body is no longer making as a result of aging, but none are prescription medications. I use all natural means like copper root, melatonin, and valerian root. I also have a small tincture bottle with half grapeseed oil and half lavender oil. Rub that, this mixture into the balls of your feet or 
on your shoulder to help you relax if you're having a struggle to sleep. And I might also add, I got some warm chamomile tea that I got in the kitchen. As soon as I finish this video, I'll upload it to the server on Rumble and YouTube. And so chamomile tea does wonders. And then trust. Trust in God or divine power is easy for me. I've been blessed to meet probably tens of thousands of people in my life. Most of the people who I associate with believe in God, and many are recovering from something, even if it is just wanting to stop being a gossip. I believe to the very core of my being that God saw me in my affliction in 1994 and reached out to heal me. Help came from people at that time and it continues to this day very active in medical missionary work and took the direction that God made clear to me after my job was outsourced in 2005. I'm always at church on the Sabbath day, which I believe is Saturday. I pray throughout each day, start my communication with God when I first wake up by saying thank you for another day and give thanks each night for the blessings of that day. If I can help you in your life journey, please contact me from my contact page and send me an email, send Skype, connection, a telegram connection, or just phone me if you've got my phone number. And I have gotten to where I really, really enjoy total disconnect from my telephone uh, on the Sabbath day, uh, spend time with my wife, because it's, it's all about relationships and relationship with God first and then relationship with family. And so I do get phone calls on, on Saturday and I'm sorry, but I just need to rest. I can take your call on Sunday. So I hope everyone understands that. And this is what helped me. So that's the end of this video. And I will have another video about the health principles that are found in the Bible. So God bless you until then. Father in heaven, I pray for this word to go out there and ripple and bless many people. I hope that people can take principles, maybe some they don't know about, and apply them in their lives. I hope we all can keep our eyes focused on you, Jesus, and not about, well, the liberals did this this week, or the conservatives did this week, or all the wars going on, or all the backbiting, the backstabbing, and all the craziness. Lord, we all need to rest from all that stuff. And so thank you for giving us that weekly rest built there in creation week before there was ever a single Jew. You had created that seven day Sabbath rest day. And so thank you for giving it to all mankind, not just for the Jewish people. And so thank you, Lord, for giving me the wisdom and the power to be able to do this for you and carry your word in Jesus name. Amen.